Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Timmy Strata, and you're listening to MMALatestNews.com. It's time to roll, baby. Hello, guys. Welcome back to MMA Latest. This is our UFC Rio Rancho recap. Now, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Let's get this channel over 10K ASAP. Now, before we get into it, we saw Jan Blachowicz absolutely obliterate Corey Anderson this weekend. Johnny, what did you make of the fight? I thought it was... Um, first of all, how are you, James? You know what? I'm all right. It's been a long time since I've done a split decision video. It, yeah, feels, it like, feels like a very long Where time. Where have you been? I don't know, you know, gallivanting around. Commitments everywhere. Commitments. You know. Right, okay. So I thought the fight was... Did I think it was amazing? Not really. I thought... Is it Blachowicz? I yeah, thought Blachowicz. Very stiff. Obviously, the Polish power showed. But did, did it really excite me? Not really. And I've got to say, I think John, jo John Jones absolutely murders this guy. I didn't see anything that that would show me he would give Jones trouble. He's too stiff. Yes, he'll catch you. If he catches you, he's going to put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. But for me, he's too stiff. He's an average fighter. I, I harped on last week about this. If you look at the top five of the heavyweight division, they wouldn't even get in the top 20 10 years ago. You'd tell me the names. What, Anderson? Anderson, Blahovic. Thiago Santos, Blahovic, Anthony Blades. Smith, Blades. No, not Blades. That's heavyweight. We've got light heavyweight. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, yeah. We've got, um, what's his name? Gustafson, Dominic Reyes Gustafson, just thought. Gustafson, Gustafson's yeah. half retired. But he's not the Gustafson we saw it against John Jones. Let's be honest. Home. The light heavyweight division is terrible. You know what? I would have said terrible two weeks ago. My mind's changing it this week. Why? Just for the fact that we had Reyers John Jones. Gave him a decent just because we had Jones Reyes, and then we that sort of put a little bit of spice on this fight, and Blahovic blew him away. Now, I said this to you on the last bit of decision. I think because who the champion is, it kind of makes that division boring. But if you took him out, you've got fantastic fights. You've got Thiago Santos, like Blahovic, who's faced off. You've got Corey Anderson. You've got. There's so many matchups in that probably two to six range it can make. You've got Uzdemir just on. The skirt to that. You've got Glover Texera versus Anthony Smith. Glover Texera is like ranked ninth or tenth. Now, of course, he, him against John Jones is a you know mile off. But I think the division's just slightly got a bit more exciting. No, I, I disagree. Let me, I'm going to bop in, James. I'm going to go for it, Johnny. <laughs> before you say something, before I can get my words out. Are exactly. you going to salt the popcorn when you're watching Corey Anderson against Blahovic? You're or... absolutely not. Let's be honest. There's a lot of names in that light heavyweight division outside of Jones. There isn't anybody that particularly stands out. There's no real draws. Like, how many views will have a Blahovic versus Anderson done? Not too many, you wouldn't imagine. I mean... It's difficult now with this ESPN+. Anderson plus. was building a bit of a persona because obviously he knocked out Johnny Walker, then he did the dance, but I can't see anybody that's going to give John Jones, you know, that massive fight at light heavyweight. There just isn't any name. Yeah, I, Dominic Reyes is the fight that we have to do I, again because Dominic... Let me finish, Mitch. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, Dominic Reyes <laughs> is the man that you have to give the fight. As impressive as Blahovic was, let's face it, Reyes, in most people's eyes, beat John Jones. I agree. And this is the issue now that we've got with Jones. There's several things that could be going on. Is John Jones getting that little bit older? Is he not quite as good as what he once was? Is this just the effects of him being off the steroids? <laughs> is Reyes actually just absolutely fantastic and none of us rated him? You know, what? what is it? Why isn't Jones performing? Or is he just demotivated for I the I think Reyers it's fight? probably all, a bit of all three of them. I think Reyes looked very good on the night. He was an undefeated fighter coming to this, and he you know, blew Chris Weidman away. Uh, obviously, John Jones is a decade into the game now with a lot of mileage, a lot of wars. He did take a couple of years out due to suspensions and whatnot. And also, he's clean now, and now he's been clean for hopefully, what, a year, just over a year now, hopefully, as all things are stuck. Like, uh, clean, hopefully, yeah, well, he's well, hopefully he's clean. Well, we hope he's clean, but, but oh, realistically what's think, happening is he's just not getting caught. I think Blahovic is probably similar to Thiago Santos in a way where that fight is probably, John Jones is the favourite. He's a much better distance, co he covers distance a lot better. I think he's a lot better skillfully than Blahovic is, but if Blahovic catches him, he could cause some damage. We saw Jones take a little bit of heat from Reyes. Now, I think Blahovic probably hits harder than Reyes does. That Especially with that right it's hand. It's different. It's completely different. The, what I talked about last week with Reyes. He absolutely won that fight. He won the first three rounds. There's no if, buts, or maybes. That's what happened. With Jones against Blahovic, he's too stiff. Reyes brought that movement, those angles, slipping in and out of distance. Mm. Blahovic is just a big lump who stands there, and if he catches you, he's going to fucking put you to sleep. But he's not going to be able to catch Jones. He's a poor fighter. He's a poor heavyweight. He's got power, which excites you, but he's stiff as a board. He will not get near John Jones, and I think John Jones knows 
that Reyes is a risky fight for him. That's why he's sort of... I, to cut in there, I think it was interesting that John Jones was cage side on Saturday night. Why? Because he was watching this, it's probably his next fight. They're trying to build this up. Go. Well, why and are they building it? Why is it not like you said? Well, I want to see Reyes. Well, it was interesting. Reyes, well, one, it was, in, it was in his home city or hometown of New Mexico. It, you know, it was right on his doorstep. And he went That's there right. and he saw Yamblahovic, Corey Anderson. Now, Corey Anderson gave him a lot of shit into the build of a fight saying, I'm going to be the one to dethrone you. I'm going to take you. And, you know, John Jones come out and said, you tasted a bit of humble pie now. You shouldn't be looking to pass your opponents. And he jumped on his seat. Now, I'm assuming he was intoxicated. You know, it's a big event. It's New Mexico. He's not fighting on the night. But I've not seen when John you say Jones. Intoxicated. Just, just uh, delve into that. Do you need to yeah. clarify that. Mate. What do you he, mean? He probably, had a, he probably had a couple of drinks on the night. Wow. Let's be honest. A couple of drinks. That's as far as we're going to go. Well, so let's talk about John Jones briefly. Have you seen he wants to make this WWE move? That does not interest me. He'd Moving be on. the ultimate villain. He'd be absolutely class, John Jones. He'd be crashing if, his car into the DVDs. He he'd be going absolutely <laughs> metal. John then, Jones would be the greatest villain in WWE history. He's a real life villain. Yeah, one is the women's division now, and two, can you imagine if they made him a face? He could make him a face. <laughs> I can't believe can it. Yeah, they changed it from the Divas division yeah, to women's, women's division. Either way, John Jones crashes his car into people. Would yeah, be fantastic. Uh, Becky Lynch wasn't too happy with him calling that that yeah. move but I don't want to see him there I don't want to see that he'd be br- at the end of his career he'd though be he class. would be a good it'd be villain. class and you get Lesnar you get Lesnar and John Jones Lesnar and Velasquez you get Velasquez and Jones what's all that about Have you triple seen threat that? matches yeah, yeah. triple threat Velasquez. matches Jones, Lesnar, Velasquez stick Fury in there <laughs> make it a fatal four oh, way <laughs> Why not? but no cri- I hate seeing that we're go- going off route here going off well route. I, I like a tangent Mitch but yeah, no, Fury would be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Fury, obviously fighting wild. You can't wrestle though. When you watch him, it's hard to watch. You when you actually watch boxers trying to wrestle, it's it's awkward. It's, it, it, it's amusing. And Fury's a good showman. Velasquez just like, you know, did Jones. pretty well with his lucha. Is it lucha libra? Lucha. I've not seen it. He's in the blood. He had the highest Velasquez. Yeah, he, he fought Lesnar. Lesna. It's one one now, when isn't it? Fury fought in that Saudi Arabian card. Lesnar versus Velasquez was the co-main. Was it? Mm. Who won it? Uh, yeah, Lesnar. Lesnar. Yeah, it's 1 1 now, and I think they're pretty going to try. Imagine and Lesnar, though, with that ego going. If you're bringing Kane over to WWE, I'm beating him this time. I'm going to slam him for knocking me out. Yeah. Yeah. I like how they used that. that. They didn't dismantle or just get rid of Velasquez's win. They used it in part of the storyline. But to go back to the card, someone who did put some theatrics into the night was Michel Pereira versus Diego Sanchez. Now, Sanchez. He took somewhat the easy way out, you could say. He but, fucking quit. That's but right. he did get <laughs> kneed in the it, face man. illegally, which was the second of the night. And I'm glad that they did the sa- They stayed consistent with DQ in both fighters that committed the knee. Brock Weaver got brutally kneed earlier in the night against yeah. Vargas. Vargas was winning the fight. And, you know, it is what he was looking for and need him. It's a bit I difficult agree. with those new and old rule systems. Sometimes you can only have the one hand down. Sometimes it's not at all. So I think there needs to be a clearance of which rules... I mean, years again, it's probably something down to the commissions, but it's definitely down to the commissions because they make the rule set on the night. But I think Diego Sanchez and Pereira didn't leave. Uh, they're a bit marmite. You either love them or hate them, and I hate them this week. No, I think that Pereira is a future champion. <sighs> He's, I've said this to you before. His skill set was fucking phenomenal. He gets cleared out by the top let five. Me, let me tell you something. That he's got a mixture. He's a mix between Wonderboy and Machida. He's got that karate style, in and out. He's fluent. He plants his feet. He's a slick fighter. He beat Sanchez in every single department easily. Sanchez just didn't know what to do with him. I was, it was the first time I've really seen Pierre Pereira fight. It was fight. the smartest move he made on the night to say, I can't continue. Because I didn't he, like he that. He would have lost that yeah. pretty comfortably. Like yeah. like you just you called him a quitter, Johnny. So obviously... He was kneed in the face with two hands. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be open to potentially getting rid of that rule then if you're implying that he quit? Well, when I say he's quit, I'm big on not calling fighters quitters because they're fucking yeah. worries. But you fucking quit. <laughs> because the referee was saying to him, he was up, yeah. and they gave him five minutes, they gave him longer, and he was sort of allude- alluding to the referee. He was saying, well, if I don't continue, will I lose the fight? Or and the referee happen? obviously can't come out and say, yeah, you yeah. pretty will. But it was like, yeah. so, we'll see what happens. I'll go through the commission's rules and we'll see I what happens. I didn't like it. He took the way out. He Pereira took the really annoyed way out. me. Pereira annoyed me. Like I've not been. Uh, it goes CM Punk Jackson. It goes Lewis and Garner, and it probably goes Pereira Sanchez to me. It was one of the most irritating fights to watch. Why I didn't feel irritating? like CM Punk Jackson, horrific standard, but relatively entertaining. I've never seen someone win and still get sacked from their job <laughs> not before than Jackson. Jackson. That's look. CM Punk won the first round, and that was incredible. CM that, Punk has won a round in the. That UFC. was interesting, but yeah. Pereira and Sanchez. You know, the Pereira walkout, is, yeah, it's all fun in games and it's a bit lighthearted and I like the character aspect of it. But I felt like he didn't always respect martial arts 
I inside disagree. the octagon. It's part of his game. He's basically looking to make a name for himself. He's looking yeah. for the theatrics. But you saw in the post-fight thing, yeah. when uh, if he'd have won, if he'd have beat Diego Sanchez, then he's massive again. Yeah. Imagine the... Um, who did he beat? He beat uh, uh, Dan Hot Chocolate, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. And then Quite when brutally it went as at, well. Yeah, brutally. And it went viral. And, and everybody's talking about he it. That's is he's a killer. He's a good fighter, bro. Let's, let's just... Bre- it is. It, it went viral yeah. that video. He did. He did well, and then he the was it Tristan Connolly. He got beat by Tristan Connolly, and then he obviously gassed out pretty quickly. Yeah, he that. could have beaten well, Diego Santos this weekend, but I can't it? believe what you're telling me. And I don't know about you, James, but we were you watching that with sunglasses on or something? No, oh, he put an absolute clinic. You no, watched that fight. His, his skill set for me is unquestionable. He's definitely got a good skill set. I just don't so like his, dem- his demeanor inside the octagon. So you don't like the showmanship. There, I think there's an edge between showmanship and disrespect for martial arts. What did he do? What did he do that was... I didn't think he was that There was a time when he was standing in the octagon just looking at the floor, jumping up about because... I, I mean, Sanchez didn't exactly come forward and put a pressure on. Sanchez is a weird guy as well with his guru. He, he made this whole statement about the supplement industry after being caught for taking take take the supplements as on Hawani's show. That kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth. It was like, I watched it, and you know when you just feel a bit on edge on something and then come into the fight week? I just didn't feel great about it. I, I did say I wanted Sanchez to win. That didn't go great. Old school legend. Can't believe he him. is. And, you know, I'm not going to take anything from his, from his status away from him. He's had some great wars. You know, there was a time when Conor McGregor and Sanchez was a, a fight that everyone yeah. wanted, well, wanted to see. Well, let's go on about that. What was the tweet that McGregor, did you see? That's McGregor being Offered McGregor. Diego Sanchez. In fact, what I saw something that? tweeted about <laughs> ESPN, McGregor, Sanchez, UC Dublin. I couldn't believe it. I, I nearly had an heart attack for a yeah, minute. That's... I'm not being funny. You might as well put Homer Simpson as the main event of Dublin. Who the fuck wants to see that? Sanchez and McGregor. That's McGregor. a ridiculous fight. No one, that's just not going to happen. I think it? McGregor will clean them up. That, well, yeah, once that left hand hits that his chin, go back it's not even worth debating. Why, why would, it's not a fight that means any sense. You just got, <laughs> Sanchez got beaten every second of it every minute be a of every tu- round. It'll tune up camp for McGregor to go into a, a Khabib or someone. No, fight Gaethje or fight... So yeah, that's, what, I mean, that's the fight I want, Gaethje. That's the fight I would yeah. love to I just see. want to go back, because obviously go you on. hate this element of showmanship that he's got, but... Is there an element there of mental warfare? We see Tyson Fury doing exactly the same yeah. thing, hands down, behind his back. Yeah, I agree. You know, uh, uh, irritating opponents like Vladimir okay. Klitschko and Deontay Wilder. That... It gets in the wait. It gets in the head. And let's face it, Pereira's doing the exact same thing. Dan Hot Chocolate was looking at Pereira, not yeah. having a clue yes. what to do. He was absolutely bamboozled, and that's Pereira getting inside his head with the. That's mental very warfare. true. But Fury's an undefeated fighter, and so there's a Pereira, there's a skill what? set on it. You know, Pereira is now one and two in the UFC. He's very close. If he loses another two fights, he could be cut. I know, but it's part of his game. It is a part of this game, but is it a part? And I know he said he's not going to change. I don't really want him to change, but he needs to tone it down maybe 10%. I don't think, I don't know what you're watching. I think, were you talking about shame? What about Adesanya? Do you like, do you like him? What Adesanya's an undefeated fighter who's now champion within two well, years. It doesn't matter so if you lose, you should stop I trying to play mental. It's like Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew got cleaned out by Adonis Stevenson, but then was still I able to use mental warfare to maybe, get in the head of David yeah, Hay. Correct. Look maybe. at McGregor. He doesn't matter losing against Khabib. The mental warfare is, if you can pull off that style, there's a reason you're not just, because it can be a disadvantage. If you do that style and you get fucking clipped, you're going to sleep. Mm-hmm. But if you can effectively use that style to go in and out, put your hands down, lure your opponent in, and then counter them, mm-hmm. then that is that is you playing you know, to your strengths, and it's and it's good it, to see. In his favour to Pereira, he he was he his striking him. was absolutely class and like that. I'm not taking anything away from his performance. Beautiful to clinic. I think he did great, and I was quite I was a little sad when he needed him because he was going to win that fight, and he you know how won, it ended. It ended. He won every second of the battle. But. Yeah, it just did lose a salutation in my mouth, and it set up nicely to see Jan Blachowicz actually clean out Anderson. Yeah. Let's just li- literally talk about that, because it inspired a great moment for ESPN with Michael Bisping and Michael Chiesa, when they were going back and forth, and Bisping said, your last fight nearly put me to sleep when he was criticising yeah, Pereira. And he was on he's comms. excited. So. Bisping's class. Yeah, in Bisping. the cage, out the cage. He's yeah. a wind-up merchant. He's you know brilliant. Yeah. He, I think he's... Um, commentating this weekend I think or he's commentating very soon he's class on the mic him and DC are such a good pair together and it's like he had a bit of the aura about him about maybe not showmanship but he was good on the mic he, he was fantastic he was, on the mic. He, he, his mental warfare was class and he sort of backed it up in a way and there was, he, there's a bit of the respect about him one sec let me one sec let me come in didn't he spit it with Jorge Riviera years he ago? did years so ago so you're yeah. telling me you don't like Pierre's uh, showmanship but you don't mind Bisping spitting at someone Mitch what are you talking about there's differences about? like 
I can say to McGregor's a great mental warfare guy, and I can say he's wrong for throwing a dolly at a bus. Yeah. There's there's levels. True. There's levels. I've but been, I've been nothing wrong you know that. what I loved about Michael Bishop being stretched off? <laughs> See outside every week. Obviously, there was an element of showmanship, but with McGregor, you know, there's the pantomime side. With Bisping, it's just that's what he will have been doing that's on who the streets he is. to random yeah. people, nights loved out. Him. That's I why him. I ended up in prison because he's well, just that hard working did you, class. Did you yeah. hear the. I don't know if you've seen it, but Chael Sonnen had a fantastic story about Mazadel that came through Bisping. How Mazadel was inside a club. Someone came up to him, uh, yeah, touched his chain, and he thought major. he was going to get robbed, and he knocked him out, and he knocked his friend out. Walked into the bathroom, and this guy's followed him in there. And he said, I don't know if he was part of that gang or not, so I knocked him out as well. He's a like, fucking that's killer. That's absolutely class. He's a mentalist. And I'm fucking you, loving. You know, Did you see him on Kimbo with his fights with Kimbo? You know, street back, fighting. Backyard, stri- backyard street and fights with yeah. Kimbo. No, it's, good to see him, it's good to see him probably get his title shot now. Love that yes, guy. Yes, he deserves it. Does that make it. him a champ champ if he wins? What, the BMF and the UFC? Yeah, does that make one second. Round. I, still, I think I've got that. Either way, though, I think Jorge Masvidal, yes, it would have been nice to see him get this super fight with McGregor, but nobody has earned a shot at the belt more than him. He's cleaned up Darren he, Till. He had the best year. Like, I'm he sorry. T- he sent he Till could... to the middleweights. He sent Till to the middleweights. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is my BMF belt that I... Thank you. I will be claiming that back. Well, right. of course. You, well, you if anybody watches the uh, Tap Out show or Debate show, I'm currently the reigning champion. of 3-0 in I that still particular think I won industry. That. I didn't like the decision. I believe it's like it the Dominic Reyes over there, isn't it? John Jones, Dominic Reyes. Anyway, what on earth was it talking champ. about, Mitch? Remind me. Oh, yeah. Back to Darren Till, Master yeah. He killed Ben Askren. Like, yep. like that, that, he could have gone down to murder for that. Sent him into though? retirement, pretty much. Yeah. And then uh, he beat Nate Diaz. Have yeah, you seen, fantastic. though, have you noticed a trend and, like, fighters coming out and trying to clear their opponent out in the first It's second. so funny. Did it. Reyes did it. He straight, was it Reyes? He threw a straight left I against think Jones. So. The first mm. second... Since McGregor's people done, want that record. Theme, people are coming out to like people, take you people out. People want records. Second. Records are bigger than some wins. I mean, what no. was what was your reaction to that? Uh, Ask him and Mazda, where were you watching? Well, it? the issue is for me. We were, we were that, here in stream. Uh, where we were you watching it? it? You can see the clip yeah. on the channel. I wasn't there. I know Mitch was, but I was I at home it. watching it. And I actually really like Ben Askren. I'm yeah, one of the I only people yeah. I like that was supporting him in that fight. I wanted, sold, I wanted Ben Askren to beat Jorge He Masvidal. sold that fight so well. And he did, he I did. thought Ben Askren's wrestling is absolutely incredible. Yeah. It still is. Even in the Damien Meyer fight, as useless as he looked in the striking yeah. department, you can still yeah. see his do wrestling's you, on a different level. Do you reckon that level. was... He came out with that hip injury after, didn't he? Do you reckon that played a big part in that you fight? You can't tell because it literally lasted two seconds. But Matt Inman, who I told you last week was on the podcast, shout out Matt Inman, um, SBG Manchester's head coach, yeah. And uh, he said he was really looking forward to that Askren fight because he said Askren's wrestling is like the fucking best there is. So you couldn't really gauge because it happened so quick. Mm. You sort like sort of McGregor and Cerrone, you don't yeah. really know what would have played out. But it was one of those moments where you don't get you I don't get that any, you don't get that you, you get that once every five years. You get it you, once every ten years. You get McGregor Aldo, and it was literally like what the fuck? I, have I, I was just absolutely seen? gutted. Ben Askren is one of my favourite hats, and then boom. Two yeah, seconds, you, need. You great, you cheers. Fuck, I've stayed up all night for this, fantastic. Legendary. You legendary. didn't have a great run last year, did you, with Askren, Whitaker, Nate Diaz? I mean, it, it's Askren I didn't do the watch long for, but for every single watch long, I've done three, and every single one, DC, my favourite fights are getting beat. I saw Dustin Poirier get choked out by a beat, <laughs> gutted. Robert Whitaker got murdered by Israel Adesanya. I'm in tears during the stream. And then Nate Diaz got beat by Jorge. I don't support Nate as religiously as I support those other two, but no. even still, it it's weren't still nice class, for me. Yeah. Right, to bring it back to the card, to recap... Uh, Montana and Mark De La Rosa became the first couple to compete on the same card. Now, Mark De La Rosa opened the card and Montana was on the main card and Mark got cleaned out in the second round. He got a TKO loss. How do you think that would have played on Montana going into the fight? Probably not brilliantly. That must be hard. If your husband's just got bait, it's not ideal at all, is it? And he still came out in her corner. See what? Could you imagine? That's ridiculous. Mitch, how would you feel if you were with a girl and you were fighting on the same now? How would you deal with that psychologically? I can imagine... Well, Rose did it with um, Pat Barry. Pat Barry. I can I imagine don't know if they fought in the same. No, it was the same. But same, they're in the camp. Yeah, they're in the same camp. It must be fun because they're training together. So you probably spend a lot of time together. It probably gets quite aggressive at times. Mm. Yeah, I wonder. Well, like, obviously, especially if it's a, the same a lesbian class. couple like Amanda Nunes and Nina Ansara. Yeah. Their relationship dynamic must be interesting because they're sparring each other every day. Yeah, but let me tell. Which you is something. ridiculous because Nunes is like one forty-five, probably one fifty before cutting, and you have got mm. Nina Ansara doing fights in strawweight. Yeah, yeah like but he's, he's still do technical yeah. But you know when you wake up in the morning, yeah. right? <laughs> what was that? I was going to say, did you see the did you see the yeah. footage of Cyborg and Michael Bisping sparring this week? No, I've not <laughs> seen that. I've that was incredible. That. Bisping's the sort of guy that if Cyborg wound him up, he would we just have, like. Yeah, I think around. they're under the same management and uh, Perillo on. Where they? was that? 
Uh, I think it was just in their gym. It was just going around Twitter. Yeah, Orange how, did he, how did he do in it? Basically? He did right. Cyber was putting on the pressure, and it, it was almost like calm down, calm down. I think this was like pre neo He's losing, then he gear-teams. Yeah, yeah it's he gear teamed it's, it's incredible. I put it up on the video. With Chris, yeah, it? yeah. This yeah. is why I don't train with women because I just don't Chris, hit go, on crack. Chris, go. 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 Calm you know, down. I'm like, listen, calm down. Okay? Let's go, Chris. So there yes. he goes again. Yes. Now, this you is know. exactly how I thought it would go. Yeah, totally. Cyborg. Well, check this. this. Oh. 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 It's an incredible video. But going back to what you were going to say. Oh, I actually forgot what I was going to say. Uh, De La Rosa's. Um, yeah, sorry. So when you wake up and talk about how you're saying about sparring, like yeah. how do they do that? Couple sparring. So when you get up in the morning, you make a cup of tea and you put your... What do you have on your toast? Uh, chocolate, jam? You know what it is? Yeah, I've, not, I don't, I've not had breakfast in a very long time. The only time I ever get breakfast is if I'm going out, going out like the somewhere. morning after a lot, so night out. Big night out, bacon, and egg, then it's sausage. A, it's a fry up type thing. Do but you I don't have breakfast then. Well, back in the day, it used to be Weetabix, but you know, <laughs> I'm, a two, I'm a two meal man nowadays. Yeah. So, right. So, so, what I'm trying to say is, it's so na- how natural Not- it is for you to make a cup of tea yeah. is for them to spar. You've got to realise these are fighters. And they spend it's all week together. They it's spend all week, nine hours a day. Pro- yeah. you see, it's it's see natural many, to it. You do yeah, see how many couples so are in cool. fighting together. Like you've got Peyton and, Zan and Austin Vanderhoord. You've got... Um, Who else is there? Incredible. You've got Rose Lamb Pat Brock Barry Lesnar as well. was going out with the uh, girl from... What was it? Was it Deborah? Do you remember with the titties? <laughs> <laughs> WWE, do you not remember her? She used to bring them out. The, do- the puppies are... <laughs> You, might be a bit before my time. Yeah, yeah. So let's move on with that one. No, let me tell you, this character, Debu, I, this is true, it's not. She used to be in WWE and she used to call the tits the puppies. <laughs> and she used to bring them out. I swear to you, it was a thing in WWE. <laughs> Watch it. I'm, I'm glad we've it. moved on from those times. Well, I'm <laughs> not, mate. I want to bring them back. About? I want WWE to go I want back the old attitude here. I want Mankind. I want The Undertaker. I want fucking. I want Edge cheating on Lita and it all getting found out. Yeah. I want it back. Yeah, I want it now. It's shit. <laughs> Mitch, uh, I don't, don't understand. You don't want any showmanship. You don't want any entertainment. Hey. What do you want to watch? What's going to thrill you? Good fights. Well, no. Good wrestling. WWE Which? fights. Who watch your dream WWE match? Oh, we're not going into that. I'm Out of what... MMA fighters. In the wrestling match? Probably Conor and Colby. That'd be incredible. No, we'll do like Conor versus Adler. John Jones because we can mix no, with Matt. No, Conor and Colby, you've got two hills going at each other. Those press, com- those press conferences would yeah. be amazing. Yeah, the contract be. signing, tables being thrown oh, everywhere. Colby stutters all over the place anyway because you imagine how he tries to copy McGregor. That's Paul Heyman with him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, he tries um, to copy him. McGregor. He's a back, though, I think you can get a lot out of sparring the people you're closest to. Like, for example, you, you know, you get the fighting brothers all the time. It's a lot of like, war. Like Nick and Nate will have learned so much from each other. Of course. But it's normal. It's like... Trying to debate it here with us sat down and it may seem alien if we're not around it all the time. Like they might not be able to do podcasts like this or talk like us. Probably would, but do you know Nick what I mean? and Nate, I doubt it. It's natural. So them fighting and them being in the gym or them sparring and each other, it's like they're making a cup of tea. They don't think them getting a left hook by the brother is not is not a big thing to them. It's not a shock to them. It's just what you're accustomed to. Mm-hmm. So I spar my little brother all the time. It is just a normal process. Yeah, but do you bully him or do you spar him? Uh, it's a bit of both. <laughs> in fact, if we spar, if we like doing rolling, he's got a second degree black belt in jujitsu. Oh, so if it's on the ground, then that, I'm the one in trouble. Yeah, that's that's trouble. So that one. Like, uh, on the feet though, it's on a bit the different. On the feet, it? technically, is better than me. If it's in the wrestling department, then then I've got that pretty comfortable. You've got that. You've got now the wrestling. In your one department. of our one of our homegrown fighters are on the card. Nathaniel Wood faced oh, John I'm Dodson. Disappointed. Disappointed yeah, he looked him, great for two rounds. He was actually I'd probably scored both rounds for him, but he came out very tired in that second round. And then in, he, he just made it back to his corner and came out in the third round. Why was that on the I don't know why. John Do- Dodson was fighting in his, in his home, Former hometown. Former title contender against yeah. one of the biggest, biggest prospects, prospects in England. You put that I don't know prelims. why. I think... There was a favour. I don't know if there's a difference. I think with this structure, ESPN plus ESPN, if the prelims are on ESPN, you're probably going to get more viewership and probably more eyes to that person as you probably do on ESPN plus. Now, the ESPN plus card wasn't great. No, you had, oh, well, it's, it's, it's you had Vanato versus Medeiros. Ray Borg is someone we mentioned, actually. Ray Missing Borg, weight for fun nowadays. He's missed Crap weight four, four times out of his last eight fights. Now, he said that 125 feels good for him, but he's winning the fights unfairly because he's missing weight. It's like... So what happened when he missed pounds. the weight? Did he, did he still let him? Did he just have a fit? They let him fight. They, I think they took 30% of his purse. See, that's uh, no, annoying that. If it's it consistent. Yeah, like, so but it's get, fly weight. I thought I'd been done and dusted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the flower you know, division has managed to survive, and then Benavides is obviously now, now for the now he's not being dismantled. That's two weeks away now. Stupid. 
Tell you what, we've got this weekend, and I know we're going to do a bit more of in depth preview in our actual preview. Fury and Wilder. <laughs> we'll touch on that. No, no, no. There's a bigger it. fight that weekend. Go on, what's going <laughs> we'll on? Start, we'll start. We'll, we'll, we'll leave off. We'll start go with uh, what's going on in New Zealand. We've got Felder versus Hocker. That should be an absolute war. Two men that I think have earned a big fight. Yeah. You know what? Looking forward to it. I didn't realise how Hooker called him out, but I saw a clip. He Hooker, Paul Felder had um, done the commentary on yeah, him. I saw, I and saw. In the Octagon interview. That's so ballsy. It is cool someone and Oceanian or Australasian MMA is getting absolutely It's crazy. Well, Adesanya yeah. champion, obviously, he's got Nigeria. Volkanovski's absolutely dynamite as well. a champion well. who's going with the Korean zombie back and forth. That would do very well in Asia. And yeah, I've heard, though, UFC 251 yeah, could be Holloway, be Volkanovski Holloway. rematch. Which, I don't necessarily... Holloway was a very good champion, yes, but yeah. was the fight close enough to warrant a rematch? I think Holloway warrants a rematch. Just for Holloway. his name. Just, Just look name. at the times he's tried to step and up. I think we've got, is it Ortega? You've got Ortega and Zabit at two or nine. I think that's happening. That so could produce a number one contender. Maybe you have Korean Zombie versus Yaya two because that was very close up until that final second where he elbowed him in yeah, the, the face. Yeah, the Korean Zombie were in the fight. Yeah. So maybe you run that back. But Again, looking back at Australasian MMA, you know Rob Whittaker's still within the pitch. He could fight Darren Till at any moment. Obviously, he's gone through personal troubles right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't think. And then... I'll tell That's you who is who has completely gone off the scene and he's not officially retired yet. He finished his UFC contract. Mark Hunt? Mark Hunt hasn't officially at, retired yet. I'm got, expecting uh, him to pop up in a Bellator at any moment. Yeah, true. Got, I love Mark Hunt. Oscar, I absolutely love I the Super Saiyan. I like him, but he loses all the fucking big fights. He's, like, he's, he's like 12 and 13, isn't he? But he, he brings big. knockouts and those kicks, those fucking yeah, legs. I mean, he yeah. beat Frank Curtis Mayer. Blades cleaned him out, didn't he? I think. However, he rocked Curtis Blades to his yeah. boots in the first round. He's a trouble. He's a problem for anyone. And he, he fought for the interim title and pushed for doom very close. Well, he had big problems with it. He was calling out Dana with the UFC. Yeah, he had massive Brock problems. Tested positive before the yeah, fight. Yeah, that was the bug bear, on. wasn't it? So he fought Lesnar. I can't remember what happened. Lesnar, did he knock him out? Les- he knocked Lesner, him out. Uh, he didn't knock him under out. He ste- he, no, decision, but well, he was on steroids. Him. And yeah, he got it was done to a no contest. I mean, and Mark Hunt still to this day trying to get it uh, is bad though, com- isn't it? Com- uh, yeah. Compensation for that fight. I mean, he beat Derek Lewis straight after in a good fight yeah. in New Zealand. But Mark Hunt was an absolute Trojan He's warrior. If you've ever read Mark Hunt's autobiography, Some he has warrior. been through been it. Through it. Didn't like, he extremely, bad, in extremely bad family problems, problems, poverty, a complete street fighter. He, he really went through it, Mark yeah. Hunt. It's a fantastic read, but Mark Hunt was absolutely dynamite. Yeah, yeah it's no. good to see Oceana getting some love now. We've had, you know, we've had three champions now. From that area of the yeah, world, Whitaker, Adesanya, With and uh, Volkanovski. Volkanovski, and Hooker's probably you know it's weird how long Khabib's going to stay champion though because I know he's talking about retiring at thirty and oh if he gets there we've got Tony Thurston of course happening, I can't wait for but Hooker Hooker's, Hooker's right on the edge. That happens. He's right on the edge. He's, I think he's in the Please top don't six. Do or seven. Don't do that to us. He's going to trip over a okay? key. He'll Rocket. find a way to injure himself. What possible so. scenario could he actually because he's tripped over Ryu, he's injured himself in training. Could be Miss White Tiramisu. <laughs> it's a ridiculous pudding of choice. Who wants for the tiramisu? Nah, mate, I would, that was, tiramisu is lovely. I was I so gutted. I pudding usually. Tiramisu Do you want to know why I was so gutted? Cooper. Because sorry, mate, I was so gutted because I think a few of the fights have been called off like a few weeks before, but this one with day the tiramisu, before, it, it was the day, day before. I was like, fucking gutted. I was like, you know that's what? the worst. We've got to fight week twice, haven't we? With yeah. the whole yeah. Well, it's the thing. We got to fight week. Ferguson got injured. Then Holloway said, I'll do it. Weight cut didn't go great. That fight finished. And then we've got Ally Quinter, who went five rounds with him. Yeah, did all right. And did very well. He probably did, probably, you said the best yeah. that anyone's done. Yeah. Yeah. The no, I still think Connor did the best. Yeah. The irritating thing is. He had the best round. I don't yeah. think he had When the best they bought fight. Khabib and Ferguson, they bought it like five months away. So we've got five months of something potentially going wrong. And it feels like we're counting them down slowly. Well, do you think six weeks away? Something like that. Do you I think McGregor's to step in? If you, uh, I believe I think he's Gaethje, training. I think, Gaethje, I think he's training. I think there's to a rumor in. that Gaethje, Poirier, and Connor are all training for this fight just in case something happens. But I can't see. I think Gaethje probably deserves it, but Connor yeah, gets I'd say Gaethje money. deserves the shot. It's, it, this is sports entertainment, mate. Yeah. It doesn't matter who deserves it by how many eyeballs are going to fucking watch it. And who's going to watch who, what you're going to see? Gaethje, Connor, Tony Ferguson, Khabib. Gaethje, Khabib. Get in. Either I way, that goes well. Stylistically, Gage Gage can offer a lot to Khabib. No, why? Are you Ex- on extremely the, get taken high le- down? Extremely high level wrestler. He's a good striker. Yeah, he just doesn't use yeah, it. but there's, there's levels. There's levels, though. Khabib would Division take one. him down and fucking maul him within, yeah. literally. You wouldn't even be a competitive fight, but, but... It's tough to ragdoll an NCAA it's such a good Division, division 1 wrestler. And like we've got Hooker Thelda this weekend. One of those will win. They're now he wrestled probably Justin Burroughs, didn't he? Uh, Justin Gaethje and put on a very good performance. He's a good, good right, wrestler. But Burroughs thought... There's levels. He, Burroughs beat Ben Askren, uh, ben yeah. Askren didn't yeah, he? Cleaned him out. But there's levels. I think, I think Again, though, Burroughs is the best in the game. Um, on the American side, I guess. I don't yeah, know but that's the one minute. You're going on about, is this Jordan, Jordan yeah. Burroughs? Yeah. Right, so you're talking about a wrestling match? 
Yes. Right. You can't compare an MMA fight when you when you as an old I think it was Mike Tyson who said it when you get hit in the face everything goes out the window. Yes. You can't compare wrestling in wrestling is different. It's a different the dimension to being different. in the octagon. Going when you have to worry about being kicked and being when you get jabbed in your fucking face and it, it's pole actually for two seconds. That's different to just concentrating on wrestling. It is. But Gaethje's by far superior in the stand-up department. I'm not saying he beats Khabib, but I make Khabib the favourite. I think but Griffin's I think, is a great striker. I think Gaethje's a good striker. I think he's wild and erratic. Yeah, he's tough. Wild, but he's better than Khabib. Khabib brings that unpredictability I of think, that right hand. Yeah, Khabib's getting better on the pads. I think his, his striking's coming up. Obviously, it's probably not... It's not a leather. I'm... I'm so excited for Tony Thurston and Khabib just because I want to see what happens if Khabib, well, if and when Khabib takes him down and we'll see what Tony Thurston does off his back. I think we've got a good chance we see either a probably a submission or a doctor's stoppage. What do you think, James? I don't think... Um, Khabib has been at so dominant, so it's hard to pick against him, but there is that element of... What if? Unpredictability. And let's face it, he's just got this special aura about him, Tony Thurston, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a wild He's man. the kind of guy that would try and submit Khabib. He's the type of guy that like him. lemon in his eyes to try and condition him. He's a <laughs> yeah. mentalist. He is a mentalist. He, he's so incredible. I believe that Khabib molds him. I can't I see... I don't know. I can't see how anyone... Yes, he brings submissions from the ground, but Khabib is that effective and he pins you oh. down and he he get he gets you tired. What he will do, Khabib, is... He will get you tired. He will let you come back up and he'll take you down again. But he didn't even let Dustin Poirier that. get tired. Although Poirier was that close from getting that rear naked choke in. He, he was. was very close. And, and Tony Ferguson is even better Better jiu-jitsu. Than He's better on the ground. Yeah, but how his he elbows can... are going to cut into Khabib. If he gets cut too much, I don't know. Has Khabib bled yet in the octagon? Don't believe so. He's not been opened up, has he? No, he's only had really and one competitive He's fight. never lost a round. Connor's he's the lost, only one. He's yeah, he's he lost had that controversial round. decision very early on in his UFC career. And it's, it's escaping me. You'd have to look at his record, but he's had one very controversial decision. Yeah, he, he deserved he it. Lost. 28 to no. Was it Michael Johnson? Johnson? It wasn't no, before, no, he cleaned that, him before out. that. His he name's escaping me, but he had a very close fight. fight. That was my first event, and I remember him just talking to Dana, like, give me a title well, shot. If you have a quick look at Khabib's, Khabib's record, Mitch, there's somebody on there who pushed him very close, and it was a bit controversial, and I'm sure I'll know the name as soon as it hits me. But either way, Khabib Ferguson, what a fight. It just needs to happen. Is it a British guy you're talking about? No, it's not. His name's escaping me. It's irritating me. Get his record up for me, Mitch. It's not that Pat Get on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Well, as, soon as, as soon as I get the name. But anyway, while he's doing that, we've got another biggie coming up this weekend. I bust you and I do that apprehensively because I'm about as terrified as I've ever been for a fight. I absolutely adore Tyson Fury. He's the man. His journey's been absolutely incredible from a man who, against all the odds, beat Vladimir Klitschko. Then ballooned up to love 20. It. I love him that he's got the love now. People actually yeah. love this man now. I, I love I, him. 26 stone. Let's have a look. At, sorry, I'll quickly look at uh, Khabib's record. See if it hits me. Bottom. Which name it was. Is it not that Pat Healy? I'm yeah, sure he's Pat Healy. Healy. I saw Pat Healy on there. Because I'm sure that was a close fight. I didn't see Gleason it. Tarbo was a very close fight, wasn't it? I didn't see it. I didn't watch it. I believe that's the right person. If I've got this wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty <laughs> no sure. I'm pretty not, sure that's not the one. Well. It's not as well. But it's <laughs> wrong comment to get out. It's a wrong comment, but <laughs> I'm pr- pretty sure it was Seabell. But anyway. No. Anyway, back to Tyson and Wilder. Tyson. Balloons up to 28 zone. Depression, drug addiction, alcoholism, not wanting to live, struggling with bipolar disorder. And then somehow he manages to lose all that weight. Just getting back healthy. Mm-hmm. would have been an achievement. Mm-hmm. But he gets back in the ring. He helps countless people who are suffering mental health themselves, helps them recover. He gets back in the ring, looks relatively poor against Seth Safari, puts on an okay-ish performance against Francisco Pena. In that point, he showed he could get back to his best, but it looked like it was going to take a lot of time. Mm-hmm. He fights Deontay Wilder, and I'll be honest, when that fight was arranged, I'm thinking, Tyson, this is far too soon. And I think it was, because I don't think he was back to his best. But even still... He showed enough to, let's face it, beat Deontay Wilder in virtually all, all but the two knockdowns. I gave Wilder one. I think I gave Wilder the second round. But other than that, it was a complete schooling by Tyson. He was brilliant. He gets knocked down in the 12 so badly. And my instant thought was, oh, no, right. We'll, Game over. we'll, we'll get him in the rematch. It didn't even cross my mind that he was going to get up. Jack Race was one of the greatest pieces of refereeing I have ever seen. Uh, noticing that Tyson Fury was awake. Yeah. Tyson rises from the dead like The Undertaker in yeah, one of the most WWE-style moments, wins the rest of the round, gets robbed. Let me tell Heartbreak. something. You know what I compared it to? I think it was the first time I was on Split Decision. I compared it to... There's only two times in my life where I've seen someone basically dead. Like you're knocked. It's not a knockout where will he get up. It's a knockout where you, you're leaving the room, you're having a drink, you're having a cup of tea, 
I said, oh my God. Day, you're gone from the fight. And the only other fight that I've seen is Nick Diaz and Paul Semtex Daly. If no one's ever seen it. They both died about five times in that fight. Fucking watch that fight because Daly catches uh, Diaz and he fa- face plants him. And you're thinking that's it. Like he's, you're out. You're not. Rises up from the dead, wins the fight. That Fury knocked down was. It wasn't even in my mind that he was going to get up. I've never seen anyone actually be knocked out put pin to the canvas and get up and win the fucking round afterwards. I mean, it's just it was mental. And if, if you remember rightly, even when he gets up, it's like, well, he's probably going to go back down again. Yeah, 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 he he and then he water. takes a huge left hook and somehow takes it. God was on his side that night. It was mental. It's so yeah. tough. And I, don't get me going with this, James, because we'll talk about it in a bit. Yeah, we we'll make I'll, a preview for this. It is a big fight. talk about it for an hour, but... I, un- I understand the boxing game, and when you listen to my preview, I'm going to predict it, and I believe my prediction will be right, which will be that's tune a bold, in to bold out, actually. prediction, right? I think that's a good note to leave it on there, guys. Make sure you drop your comments in below. How how impressed were you by Jan Blachowicz? Does he deserve a title shot next to Dominic Reyes? Still in the mix. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. We have got some incredible content coming up, and we've also got our watch longs of 248 and 249 coming as well. So make sure to keep it locked down on MMA Latest. Follow us on socials, on Twitter and Instagram, links in the description, and we will see you on the next video.